Today, the Prime Minister was in the news in Brisbane attending the May Day rallies, public holiday in Queensland today for the union movement. Solidarity forever! Especially when it comes to... Uh, Union wages over at the ABC. Now, of course, remember, the voice is not political, but here they were pushing the political stuff in and around the voice. Now, all of this was in the reaction to the Prime Minister being at Kyle Sanderland's wedding. Now, I will be honest about what I said last night, and I stand by it tonight. I don't care that he went to the wedding. It's a long history of this stuff in Sydney and politicians turning up to radio and TV people's things, and I love Kyle. Kyle loves this show, so we love Kyle. So that's not really my issue. But... After there was comparisons to, hang on, he spent nine hours at the wedding versus four hours in Alice Springs, guess what was hastily arranged this afternoon? A trip to the Northern Territory, one that you didn't really hear about. Why? Because, I can tell you, this was quick. He landed at 4.30 this afternoon. He was out by 7 o'clock. There was a warning that went out to the media that he would be doing something at about 3 o'clock this afternoon for 5 o'clock local time. All of this done nice and quick so the pictures would get out but no hard questions would be there. Now, you would notice that despite the fact that there was a little funding announcement here, a couple of other photos showed much of his time was not actually spent meeting with Indigenous elders or trying to find a way to get the Lord Mayor of Alice Springs to take the trip, well and truly long trip, up the road to Darwin. No, instead he was on the cans with the Labor mates inside Central Darwin. Now we all know how this game works, which is it's all about saying, "Well, I've, I've been to, I've been to the, I've been to the territory," but of course was there. Remember, landing at four thirty, leaving at seven o'clock. He was there to refuel his jet, so he came up with a reason for why he was in Alice Springs. It was a quick press conference with five minutes' notice, and the bulk of the time was actually spent on the cans with Labor people in Darwin. But it speaks to again. What a lot of people have noticed tonight, and I can't disagree with, which is the Prime Minister is falling into one of the age-old traps that will slowly but surely destroy all politicians, which is they think they're famous when they think they are a star. Now, no doubt, Albo is, of course, greatest Prime Minister of all time, flying high in the polls and will win the next 28 elections, according to Albo and his media mates. But the reality is, is that when you start to believe your own BS, when you believe your own hype, people start to see you as just a normal politician. Remember, the Labor Party's election review after the 2019 election was that the number one thing they had to do to Scott Morrison was turn him into a normal politician to break some sort of special connection he had after the 2019 election. Now, whenever a Labor person is in power, that is a lot harder to do because it is the extreme bulk of the media that act as the gatekeepers of a Labor Prime Minister. But one thing, no matter how hard they spin, has been the matter of priorities. Literally, in Alice Springs for four hours one day and the next three days, he was in Melbourne at the tennis. Now, a Prime Minister and a Premier has every right to turn up to cultural and sporting events. But there's a little pattern here where the Prime Minister is a little bit lost to stardom. Remember when Shaquille O'Neal was out here flogging a betting app? He was able to get a meeting with the Prime Minister. Why? Because the Prime Minister tried to pretend that this was all to do with celebrity endorsement of The Voice. Again, politicians have photos with famous people, but this particular one loves being the Triple J kid who grew up. Lots of photos of rock stars you've heard of and your kids have heard of. When it comes to hanging out with people at Kirribilli House, well, we know. Bill Gates gets an invite. The Mayor of Alice Springs does not. Of course, I wonder whether certain flights and certain islands came up in conversation. No, no, not at all, not at all. Instead, of course, it was all to do with pandemic preparedness. When Barack Obama was in Australia for a paid speaking gig. Now, remember, these are not official visits who got the invite, of course, and the look around the wet gardens, none other than the former president of the United States. Now, again, all of these things in and of themselves are not the reason why Anthony Albanese must resign from office today. But it gives you an idea of priorities. The only reason he was in the Northern Territory today was to refuel his jet. 
The only reason he went before a camera today in the Northern Territory was to cover up for what people had noticed about where he had spent his time when it came to Kyle's wedding. Again, no issue. But he should have spent the amount of time he spent at Kyle's wedding in Alice Springs months ago. But instead, he jumped off to the tennis for three days. Now, every politician, I hate to break this to you, every politician is a very, very carefully choreographed version of themselves, where, yes, they take a a, a grain of truth or maybe even a foundation stone of truth and they start to build their public character until eventually they rise to being the leader of their party and eventually a prime minister. In this case, we know the path that Albo has taken. The housing commission kid who's turned good, was able to educate himself thanks to the joys of the Whitlam government to eventually work for the Hawke government. A man who is one of the people who's not just a fan of the South Sydney Rabbitohs because it's his local team, but because it's the workers' team as well. This was a man who is of the people. But like all politicians, once they eventually get to the front of the plane, they don't really want to hang with the people at the back of the plane and they certainly don't care about the people that they fly over in between celebrity appearances. Now, do you think Albo looked happier today in Darwin or at the GQ Awards where he was Politician of the Year? Do you think he looked more at peace in Alice Springs than when he was in the pages of In Style magazine, where I get it. Every bloke with enough makeup and enough lighting can eventually look like a detective from a 1970s show in the United States. But the message to Albo is pretty simple. One of the things that has made him have this connection to Australians is an ability to govern for all Australians. And yes, celebrities are part of all Australians. But priorities are that you should be seen not just to be turning up to the opening of the envelope, but you should actually be working on what's written inside the envelope, the decisions that will be taken, truly making the place a better place rather than just one that will be applauded on. Now, remember, that image there, which made it look like random members of the public were cheering him through the corridors of Canberra, they're staffers. Members of the public aren't allowed into the ministerial wing, let alone outside the Prime Minister's office. Instead, all the people that you can see on the screen, hopefully in a second, clapping him along are none other than Labor Party staffers. It's a bit like when Jim Chalmers will deliver his budget in reply in opposition or then budget, standing ovation in the public gallery. It's all staffers. Now, all of this, again, is a very well-crafted image. It's one that Australians certainly voted for and still seem to like. But the more and more the choices are made about the look at me rather than here's what I can do for you, slowly but surely people start to get frustrated. Now, again, I'm not saying it's about to turn in the next news poll, but perhaps, just maybe, the absolute height or the welding in of Australians to the Prime Minister in the honeymoon suite, we may be starting to look for at least a window to open sometime soon.